Hi everyone, this is Chris Saraga from the 365. I'm down here at the Feather River, right near Centennial Park, and I've just got back from watching the Orville Strong's inaugural meeting. It was a very good event. There was a lot of people speaking there. That video in, in its entirety shall be placed right after this. Uh, I thought I would get down to the water so I could at least give you guys some totals. So I will do that right now. So if you can see right behind me here, that is the Feather River at 13,000 cubic feet a second. The uh, inflow to the reservoir is also 13,000 cubic feet a second. So it's staying pretty even. It has gone down to 828 feet above sea level. So that's great for all of us. I'm going to pull this camera back and pan you around a little bit and explain what I'm looking at. And then I, the video of uh, the Orville Strong meeting will follow. You can see Senator Nielsen speak, uh, Assemblyman Gallagher, uh, uh, William Colony from the uh, Board of Supervisors and a host of other people will speak and tell you what Orville Strong's about and how they hope to uh, make our town a little better. Thank you very much for watching and as always like, share and subscribe. You're probably seeing this on YouTube so definitely give that YouTube link a subscription and give the video a like if you like it, okay? Thank you very much. Have a good day. So this is the area just below Centennial Park in Orville. As you can see, the water is going past about 13,000 cubic feet a second. It's a beautiful sunny day down here. It's about 85 degrees. Um, I can't really pan you over towards the left there because the sun is in the way. But you can see where I'm at right there. You can see the high water mark on the trees there. Just thought I'd give you a quick little look around. And I'll be back to my normal reporting schedule tomorrow. So I will see you guys all tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Uh, I guess I can pan you around a little bit. You get a little dark there, but stay safe. Thank you for watching. And have a great day. Good Bye. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I just want to let you know, uh, my name is Sandy Linville. And yes, it is my fault that it is this hot today. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah, absolutely. If you need to blame somebody, I am the person to blame. When we had planned this event last, oh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we've been watching the weather. As of last Tuesday, it was raining and 66 degrees. So I said, please, 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 did a chant, pray to whatever deity I could think of, pray to them all. And I said, please, please, let the sun come out and let it be warm. And voila, all of my prayers were answered. I'd like to thank you for enduring this heat to come out, to learn a little bit more about Oroville Strong, and to thank you for those members who have joined us already and for those new members who are about to join us. Before I begin, I want you to listen to something. This happened on May 4th, 1968. On May 4, 1968, Oroville Dam was formally dedicated by Governor Ronald Reagan. Here before you is Lake Oroville, falling to its destiny for the use of flood control, hydroelectric power, irrigation, municipal and domestic purposes, and as one of the greatest recreational and fishery lakes in California. And off there is the highest dam in the United States. This is a major achievement of our time, and it's with great pride, therefore, that I simply dedicate Oroville Dam and Lake Oroville to the people of California's future who will benefit from this giant structure and the water that it impounds. Thank you very much. That was Ronald Reagan's inaugural speech for the ribbon cutting on the dam. That promise was made to us 49 years ago. Today, I stand here speaking to you as a result of the severe economic and reputational impact that happened because of the spillway incident and has led us to formally create the Oroville Strong Coalition. We are a union. We are a union of over 72 businesses and community members, and we are supported through the efforts of Assemblyman Gallagher, Senator Nielsen, and County Supervisor Bill Conley. Together, we 
will be strong and we will be a unified voice for Oroville and all the downstream communities as we demand that our safety and restitution remains the priority for through the recovery efforts. While Ronald Reagan dedicated this dam to the people of California's future, who will benefit from the giant structure and the water it impounds, the dam has cast a dark shadow over Oroville that has slowed our growth, and this shadow results primarily from the way the dam has been operated and maintained. This was not a natural disaster. The spillway tragedy may have been nature inspired, but it was person caused. And we are here to ensure that those who are accountable will be held accountable for the damage that resulted. Over the past month, we have heard apologies from DWR and we have heard them say that they want to help. If DWR really cares about helping our community heal and restoring our trust, then we need them to step up to the plate and become good citizens in our community. It is time for DWR to make amends for the damage that it has caused. It is time for DWR to make amends, not just advance the projects that were agreed to 12 years ago. That is, they, want, that is, they need to provide fair and reasonable compensation to our community to make it whole again. Our Oroville Strong mission is simple, to advance meaningful solutions to make the dam work for us. Our priorities include meaningful solutions to help recuperate the financial loss of having to evacuate because of the spillway incident. Businesses were closed and more importantly, people weren't earning paychecks. To fight for reasonable compensation for what it costs us as the host county of the dam the cost that we as taxpayers have to bear for additional public safety and for repairs to our roads that are a direct result of the dam. Third, to advocate for a Highway 70 to be developed into four lanes. This is not just a matter of safety for enhanced evacuation routes, but for economic growth and prosperity. Fourth, to acquire subsidies for utilities such as water and electricity and to secure tax credits to help stimulate our dull economy. Just as Ronald Reagan said, this is a hydroelectricity staple of the, of the state. Fifth, additional evacuation infrastructure for our community such as sirens and enhanced notification systems. And sixth, we are working to help restore our damaged image that has resulted from this incident. At the Chamber of Commerce, we receive dozens of calls from people asking if it's safe to visit Oroville. Businesses have lost customers, and job applicants have turned down offers because they have heard the word eminent dam failure. That's what the world thinks of Oroville. This was human caused, and we are asking DWR to help step up. Story. Um, so while we recognize there's a lot of work to do on many fronts, we want to let the world know that Oroville is safe and open for business. Um, that it's not defined by broken promises or big money water rights, that it's rich in California history, it's incredibly natural beauty, and it's a community with a voice, and that is Oroville strong, if we choose to be. Um, we would like to deliver the message in a multi-platform digital media campaign through web, social media, possibly even TV. The people who this reached, this message reached, were primarily on the internet. That's how news travels these days. How did everybody find out everything about, you know, a lot of what's happened here and the incident was through Facebook. Sorry. Or something like that. Um, and at the center of this campaign, will be a series of Oroville branded films which address the things we just I just spoke about spoke about um, and we also want to pro provide a social media platform for people to local community to tell their own stories about why they love Oroville why they feel good about Oroville and what we can do better in Oroville um, and have okay uh, second page Good. Um, 
so our goal is to have everyone, the community, um, work together on this campaign and, and have your voices heard. Um, and one of the ways we're doing that is we're hiring local talent. This won't be farmed out to a, a marketing firm somewhere else. This is going to be local talent, filmmakers, um, writers, the crew, the, the artists, everybody involved is going to be local. So we're, we're really happy about that and proud of that. Um, so if you have any questions, because I talk a lot slower when I'm not in front of a mic, um, I'm around, so just let me know. Thank you very much. With that said, um, we have a couple of invited guests who have been very instrumental in helping us achieve some of our goals. Um, I'm going to invite Laura Page from Doug LaMalfa's office to come up here and talk a little bit about the efforts they're doing on a, on a national level. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you, and it's a pleasure to have our district office, our main district office here in Oroville. So I was one of the evacuees with all of you also, and it's been um, a pleasure to be here and to help this Oroville Strong effort. Um, as you know, when the emergency happened, Congressman LaMalfa was very instrumental in getting the ear of President Trump and having the area declared a disaster in a very short period of time in order to release necessary funds to help front some of the emergency response efforts. Um, also, Congressman LaMalfa on the floor of the House last month, uh, in the record, he talked about the city of Oroville, sharing it with his colleagues in the House membership, and talked about Oroville is open for business. And he regrets not being able to be here today. Congress is in session. But he prepared some comments that he would like me to read. So please bear with me. I want to start by thanking everyone who has worked so hard to make Oroville Strong a reality. And expressing my regret that the House of Representatives calendar prevents me from attending today in person. None of us expected the rapidly escalating crisis that we were confronted with just a few short months ago and certainly not the ensuing economic challenges that were to come along with it. When water began to flow over Orville Dam's emergency spillway, the national spotlight shined brightly on our historic city, albeit briefly, but with a profound impact. The entire nation watched as nearly 200,000 people from Butte, Sutter, and Yuba counties dropped everything and evacuated on a moment's notice, fearing the worst of outcomes. When the national media's attention quickly drifted elsewhere as residents began returning to their homes, the story of Oroville was left incomplete. In the eyes of many who had no reason to believe otherwise, Oroville was closed, an unsafe place in the shadow of an impending disaster. That is why this project is so important. The immediate safety concerns may have subsided, but that is only the first step in this process of recovery. Now we are challenged with showing the nation that Oroville is back open for business. To those in attendance today and those who have joined this coalition, you already know the significance of this city and this project, and I, like you, understand the importance of spreading that knowledge and educating the public. Oroville Strong can help put the city back into the spotlight and finish the story of Oroville, that we are all more than just a dam and more than just a spillway. From the tremendous natural beauty of our landscape to the historic offerings of downtown, Oroville has plenty to offer for everyone. A strong Oroville is a strong Butte County, and as your congressman, I look forward to working with all of you to renew this vision as a reality. Thank you for so much for inviting me here today. Thank you. And now we'll hear a few words from our assemblyman, James Gallagher. Thank you for being here with us today, James.
right, well, thank you for uh, inviting me to be here uh, today. This is a great event, and I appreciate the work of the Chamber of Commerce, and, and especially Sandy Linville, who's been a, a great leader in bringing this effort together. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm James Gallagher, and I, I represent Oroville um, and all of the downstream communities uh, in the State Assembly. Uh, I grew up along the Feather River. I grew up in Nicholas uh, in Sutter County. So I went through 86. I went through 97. Um, my best friend at the time, his family was actually flooded down in Plymouth Lake. And uh, they're, you know, the parents were actually saved by a guy who came over in a cherry picker, picked them up off their car and got them over to a roof uh, where they were eventually rescued uh, in 97. And I remember the, the fear and the panic in 97 when the levee broke and people evacuating, coming down the road, not knowing where to go, uh, the chaos of that event in 97. I remember 2006, I actually was back with a group on Katrina hurricane relief. My wife was pregnant with our first child and I called back and hearing about the high water up against the levees at that time. And again, you know, just the fear and concern. And then fast forward here to, to February. Uh, again, seeing that, that panic, getting that email on February 12th that this is not a, this is not a drill. Evacuate Lower Oroville and downstream communities. You know, and those, for those of us who live down in the Yuba Sutter area, every, you know, there's a lot downstream. Uh, and, and I know you all, you all know that. Uh, but going again, and it was, it was so eerie as I was seeing the same thing play out again of people evacuating, people not knowing what was to come, you know, and the, the fear and the panic, the frustration with that. So I carry that with me as your representative. My family was evacuated from Yuba City. Uh, when this happened. I carry all that with me and I carry that history and the legacy that we really don't care to have in Oroville, in the downstream communities. And I'm here to say, and, and, and part of what my mission is as your assemblyman, is that the status quo is not okay. And the status quo will no longer be accepted. And it starts with groups like this, with Oroville Strong, of us coming together as a community. I'm proud to say that Oroville Strong and the Chamber and many of the businesses that are involved with this effort are part of a coalition that we've been facilitating of all the communities that have been affected by Oroville so that we can speak with one voice and that we're not gonna go away. As Sandy said, we're gonna continue this effort until we get real change, we get real reform, till we see promises that were made are finally kept, that we see accountability, that we see compensation, but more so that we see that this dam, which is a cornerstone of the state and provides so many benefits, power and water to the entire state, but we bear the burden of it to finally see that brought into the condition that it should be in, to see it run the way that it should be run, and to ensure that in the future I'm not gonna have to worry once again about a 86, a 97. And I think one of the big concerns is every time we get a lot of snowpack, a big snowpack up there, everybody downstream is scared because we're only one Pineapple Express, one warm storm away from something that could be really dire for all of us. So a big part of our conversation moving forward is how do we ensure that that dam and how it's operated during those conditions is safe for us downstream? Because even when we have an operating spillway, if 160,000 CFS comes down that spillway, there's gonna be problems downstream. There's gonna be problems to the levees downstream. And we've seen that. So we need, we can do better. We can do better for all the communities downstream. We could do better for Oroville. And that's why we're here today. And so you have my commitment and Senator Nielsen, who has been my partner uh, in working on this. Uh, as you know, we've held uh, actually two now oversight hearings on the Oroville Dam incident. We're gonna continue to have oversight hearings on that. 
I have the commitment from the chair of the Water Parks and Wildlife Committee to hold a hearing here in Oroville, in addition, not just down in Sacramento, but here, um, so that people can hear firsthand from all of you. But it's more than just having hearings, it's more than just talk, we want real substantive change moving forward so that we don't have to be back here again. So that this community can prosper the way that it deserves to prosper. This is the center. When, you know, when Oroville was, was founded, there was great promise here. All the resources, you know, the timber and the agriculture and the water, this was the center of Northern California and the promise of what it could be. And we all believe in that. We know what Oroville can be, what it's already been doing. And in the aftermath of this incident, we want to ensure that all the good work that has been done is going to continue and it's going to be recognized and that people will say that Oroville is, the, is that place, is that place of promise. It's the place we want to come. It's the place for your business. It's the place for your family. It's the place for recreation. This is the place where people want to come. And we intend to hold all the parties who are involved in this to that. Because that's what we want. For our community, for this community, and for all the mighty communities of the North State. And we appreciate you being here today as the first step in this effort. Thank you for, thank you for your effort. Every, every person counts. All of us coming together, we're a lot stronger. And if we speak with a united voice, we can accomplish these things that have, that have not been done in the past. So I appreciate your time today. Thank you for allowing me to be with you. And we'll continue to, to do this work for our communities. Thank you. With that, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Senator Nielsen, who really needs no introductions, been representing us well for some time. Thank you, Senator. Well, you betcha. And James and I make a good team. We come from the same background, farming. That gives you a sense of common sense. And folks in government, that is largely absent. <laughs> I got to deal with that this very day for about six hours in the budget as we were dealing with putting the budget together. Let's, uh, let's keep working together to keep Oroville gold. That's what your name evokes what you're named for. We can keep it that way. This set, setback need not endure. Now keep in mind, when we first talked to some of your leaders here that put this together, we realized that most humans have very short memories. Initially, through November and December, James and I were besieged with calls from colleagues and people around the state. Oh, how's it going? What do you need? What can we do to help? And then that kind of died down. And that's sort of human nature. If you're not confronted with a big crisis, then you forget about it. You move on to other priorities. That's why it's our job to keep this issue and the fixing of the Oroville Dam and Spillway to world class status. And I am not being too much of a prognosticator, but I envision the time in the near future when magazine and specials on TV are going to be portrayed and read to talk about the Oroville comeback. And that will be because of you, not because of the Department of Water Resources, I assure you. In fact, we've had quite a tussle with those folks. Uh, they seem to have a real hard time speaking straight talk or getting information out. And James and I have felt that that is our major service to you in the short run, is to make sure they come clean. And more importantly, this time, the job is done right and enduringly. One of the first questions I asked was about the inspections and when they were done. And James and I have done a lot of research about it. 
I asked the question, were any of the inspections have boring? Not boring and lackadaisical and not impressive, but boring down into the firmament to see what the entire profile from the spillway down. James did some heavy research, found it only one time they've done a borer. Is that correct, James? On the spillway, one time in an inspection. So that means everything was visual. Maybe they felt their fingers in the crack too, but that didn't cut it. One time. Had they done that, they could have seen a lot of what has happened. We who have been up there a lot have observed it. That the concrete was not paid, laid down clear into the firmament. That there was gaps. My father-in-law was an electrician. He offered that idea, or that thought to me 50 years ago when he worked up there. Did we, was that anchored, grouted into the firmament? The metamorphic rock appears not and into the firmament below. Over the, and then there was water and problems with the drain, letting trees grow up around the spillway, which then encumber and plug the drains, which then allows the water to wash out the lesser strong soils expanding the void under the spillway. Many, many things. And then with that enormous power of Mother Nature, and there's nothing like Mother Nature. Atom bombs don't compare. You've probably got up close to that spillway as James and I have and felt the power of that water. Or been along the rivers, seen the power of the river these big storms. Over the years, I sure have. I've represented 19 different California counties in North and Central Delta and all the Sacramento River's watersheds. I've been through a lot of these things, folks. But as I have spoken to all of those disasters, none compared to the potential of what this could have been. And thank the Lord that it was not. But that's the past. Our job now is to look forward and work together to keep this to the fore, to get the help that we deserve from the state, the federal government, from the water contractors who have benefited from this. This is not simply something for Butte County. The whole state of California has profited for all these over 50 years. That is a state responsibility. And we're not going to take prevarication, which means talking around the truth, or ignoring us for granted. James and I are blessed, we feel, to be at the vanguard of articulating your position and fighting for it. And with you organizing out here as you are doing now, there will be a remaining golden future for Oroville, for Butte County, the North State, and that's what we have to stand for, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you for taking time out of your afternoon to come here. But understand, this is only one of many, many times we will have to be together and keeping up the good fight. Right now at hand, with James and I, we're not just working on getting the spillway fixed and make sure the dam is secured. And by the way, we don't want to forget the dam. You know, we've got the spillway. We know what happened there. But some other things need to be looked into as well status of the dam. We've been told there's no problems up there. Well, we think we see some little green grass growing up there that might show there is a little bit of a problem. That's just one of many things that have got to be looked into. So we must be vigilant. We must be determined 
and we must be in it for the long haul. So I thank you for being a part of our collective partnership for the future of Oroville. And let's keep Oroville golden. follow everybody that, you know and it's hard to follow people that are eloquent and good in speech and all that but you know um, just being your local county supervisor I want to remind everybody on this side of the river you live in my district everybody in the city limits in my district and I want to tell you I have a love for this community that nobody can can get over me nobody and you know there's another part of this that I, I keep getting told, you know, you're a hard ass. Well, I guess somebody has to be that. And being a hard ass, I'm so grateful that our assemblyman and our senator and our, even our congressman, who's really been supportive, has stepped up and said, we're going to hold people accountable. We're going to hold them accountable for what? We want to be safe, right? We want to be safe. That's it. Everybody, that's a basic need to be safe. So I won't go into detail. We're gonna, we're gonna hold DWR and the people responsible up there accountable for that. And the repairs, and then number two, I wanna be safe in the operations. That means you gotta hold that lake lower to keep Waterville safe and strong and so we can attract businesses here and not worry about flooding. That's what we need to do. And number three, you can go online, Butte County, I got it up there and read the history of all the promised recreation. We need stronger recreation to attract people into our community so they'll spend money here in the downtown that finally, thank God, people have invested and it's coming back. But it's always been because that recreation was never provided, this never happened. And I'll give you just a little tidbit of the history. There was going to be 1,500 parking places right there on the levee connected by a steam train to the base of the dam, went to a tram and a monorail. That didn't happen. This part collapse only thank god thank you steve and everybody and connie and everybody else that's invested downtown and next why should it cost us money to host the facility they took forty-one thousand acres off the tax rolls they bought every flat piece of land around the lake so we can't have a resort or recreation that produces tax dollars into our economy Butte County is out of pocket every year. 12 years ago, audited 5.3 million. On top of that, fire and rescue, um, police, and so forth. So to make our community strong, we have to get the respect, the respect of DWR. That we're not like their little stepchildren. We're not the people that host the dam. We're the people you respect and you make us whole and you try to make us advance as a community and that's not only economically but that's in status around the state remember when that dam was complete we crashed this community crashed and we're just now coming back for example south orville was a vibrant working place and it became impoverished to this day 24 percent of the people in the southern part of our community are living in poverty so we need to get that respect for them. I mean, their, their words are somewhat hollow to me until they, uh, we communicate to them that you're gonna make us whole and all these different issues. And again, I think the Chamber of Commerce, I think Sandy for such a strong speech, I think all of our electeds for what they did, but us as a community need to come together, make Orville strong and get accountability. Thank you. coming out. Much appreciated, uh, especially in this unforgiving heat. Uh, thank you very much. And, and remember, 
we do have some hot food over here for you, too. Um, <laughs> That's my cue. <laughs> Not yet. And one last thing I want to let you know is we have launched a brand new website not but an hour ago. So please go check out our new website. It's orivillestrong.org. Thank you for coming out. Okay, I'm done. <laughs>